This is Unit 5, Right Triangles. Preview video, 5.1 Part 1, Pythagorean Theorem. This, by far, is the most important unit of the year. We're going to be studying right triangles. And believe it or not, right triangles influences literally hundreds of professional situations, including medicine, aviation, navigation, forensics, obviously any architecture of any kind, and even communications and satellite communications. All of these are impacted by what we are learning for the next three weeks. Taking a look here, this is preview video 5.1 part one. Make sure you get a date, time, location, even if the location is, you know, on top of my bed with my puppy dog versus sitting at my desk. Sitting at desk is preferred. And your parents may not witness you doing these, but you must convince them that you did do them on your own with earplugs in your ears and actually watching and interacting. Please find the green cardstock page in your reference booklet. It is called your right triangle toolkit. It looks like this on the front and this on the back. Make sure you have this where you can see this. This is absolutely essential. We're going to be studying right triangles. Right triangles are what I will nickname literally the key to the universe, the key to the geometry universe. And it unlocks most practical applications is the mighty right triangle. For this unit, this single page, front and back, I have nicknamed your best friend because it will literally be your best friend for the next three weeks. It is also called the Right Triangle Toolkit. Keep it handy for every single lesson. First, we're going to review some simple nomenclature of a right triangle. By definition, a right triangle has a right angle. That right angle, the two sides connected to the right angle, physically connected, are called the legs. So when we say the word leg in a right triangle, they are the sides that are physically touching the right angle. Then, if you imagine the right angle as an arrow, physically trace that right angle. And that little point there, draw a little arrow. This is the longest side of the right triangle that the right angle points to. Physically trace it. That's called the hypotenuse. Because that's just so fun to say, we're going to shorten it most often to the abbreviation hypo. There is an incredibly powerful, simplistic, and important property of right triangles. So let's say you have a right triangle and this side length is three units, and this other leg Bunny hop that with me is four units. And you can see that the length, bunny hop this with me, of the hypotenuse is five units. Now, just in the margin, warning, this is not a true statement. Adding the legs does not equal the hypo. It's very important. Just taking those side lengths, two, and adding them together for, to equal the third is not equal. But notice, 
if you take this 3 and literally square it, we have 9 units. Take the 4 and square it, we have 16 units. Take the 5 and square it, you have 25 units. Now take a look at this. Is that a true statement? And the answer is yes. So what we have here is the square of the legs, the sum of the square of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. The square of the legs, one leg squared plus the square of the other leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. You might commonly remember this from a previous class as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But that is the last time you will ever see me write the equation. I personally will never use this style of that equation because A, B, and C doesn't describe where the locations are. This is the equation that I would like you to use for this class when we talk about the Pythagorean Theorem. So when I say write out the Pythagorean Theorem, I want leg squared plus leg squared equals hypo squared. Really key understanding. We're going to be dealing with a lot of radicals and square roots. Exponents expand. Exponents expand. Whenever you have an exponent, always expand it into what it actually means. So root 11 squared means root 11 times root 11. And last class, you figured out that any time a radical is times itself, you get that perfect square, which just becomes the number on the inside. Exponent, expand. So 3 root 7 squared looks like this. 3 root 7 times 3 root 7. You do outies and innies. 3 times 3 is 9. Root 7 times root 7 is 7, so 9 times 7, 63. Exponents expand. Have, need, do. These are the three words that help you understand when do you use which tool. And in this, when you have two sides of a triangle and you need a third side. You do Pythagorean Theorem. I am going to just abbreviate it Pythag. So in a moment, I'd like you to say this with me. If you have two sides, need third side, Pythag. If you have two sides, need a third side, Pythag. Say it with me. Have two sides, need third side, Pythag. We're going to do this together. First off, I label. There's one leg. There's the other. I look at the right angle. Right angle points to the hypo. And we're going to write leg squared plus leg squared equals hypo squared. Label equation circle plug chuck. So now I circle each component. Leg, circle, leg, circle, physically circling and plugging it in. And whenever you square anything, I want you to put parentheses around it 
so that you understand it's not just the root 3 that's squared, it's 2 root 3. Not just the root 3, but 2 root 3. Now, exponents, expand. Root 10 times root 10 is 10. Two root three, two times two is four. Root three times root three is three. So this becomes 12. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. So x equals root two. Now if you can factor, do so, but there's no dates, if you will. So the final answer here is simply root 2. I'm going to do two more with you, and you're going to do two on your own. No calculators. Let's do this together. Start by labeling. Equation. Circle plug chug. Opposite of squaring is square rooting. Final answer, root 45, x equals, the 3 comes out, 3, root 5. Let's do one more. Label. The right angle points to the hypo. Write the equation. Circle plug chuck. Exponents expand. Any radical times itself is just the number of the inside. Remember that, because this technically is root 9, but the square root of 9 is 3. So we're going to simplify root 8 here. A pair of 2's come out. Final answer for x is 2 root 2. Now, this page, very important. You're going to do this on your own. You're going to pause the video. No calculators. Solve for the variable. Simplify your radicals. When you're done, you can watch the rest of it in high speed, if necessary, to just correct your work. And if you're correct, I expect star smiley, something mm -hmm. of that nature. And if you're not correct, I expect you to check your work. Pause. Do your own work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. You can watch this in high speed if you need to. Ready? Like squared.
You should have gotten x equals 9. Taking a look down here. Label your legs. Circle plug chuck. So the 10 comes out, square root of 2. So the correct answer you should have gotten here is 10 root 2. We forgot to breathe. Oh, no. Students, highly recommend you take a minute and review what you learned today.